Hello, my name is Adam Linder, and I work on the Big Fix team at HCL. In this video, we'll be talking about the steps that go into creating a software package using the console. Before we get started, feel free to scan the QR code in the bottom left of the screen, which will bring you to my LinkedIn profile. If you have any questions after the video, I'll be happy to follow up with you. Big Fix is a powerful tool with a myriad of uses. One of the places I think it really shines is its ability to deploy not just the software packages provided by HCL, but arbitrary packages built into fixlets by console operators. Most of the quote-unquote heavy lifting actually has nothing to do with BigFix. BigFix is just the glue that holds everything together. I follow the same three steps for every software package I create in BigFix. The first is to figure out how to install the program from the command line. This is often referred to as a silent or quiet installation. Different installers are packaged with different methods, but some combination of Googling and trying common command line flags will usually get you what you need. Next, I figure out how to detect if the program is installed at the version that I want using relevance. Don't worry if you aren't a relevance whiz. You can modify a single piece of relevance to do this for just about all Windows software. You can see an example of that relevance here on this slide. During the demo, I'll show how I derived it. Finally, I turn my installation commands into a fixlet. You usually don't have to put in much effort to go from working command line installation to working fixlet. So that's what you'll see in this video. I'll show common methods for determining the silent installation command for a piece of software, and I'll talk through how I develop the relevance to check if it's installed and at what version. Let's get into the demo. To demonstrate the most common type of package you'll build, I'm going to make a fixlet from the 7-zip MSI installer. If you can, try to track down an MSI installer for the package you're making. Silent installation for MSIs is typically one size fits all, so much so that as you'll see, BigFix will automatically put the installation syntax into our fixlet. It's not a problem if you aren't able to get an MSI. There's almost always a way to install software silently. You can often determine the silent switches for an executable by running it with the slash question mark, slash H, or slash help flags. I've downloaded the installer for the statistical software R, and as you can see, if I run it with the slash question mark flag, it tells me that I can use the slash very silent flag to install it quietly. In general, you want to pick whatever seems like it's least likely to try to get input from the user during installation. Other common flags are slash lowercase s, slash capital S, slash silent, and slash quiet, but your particular package may have special syntax. Since we're installing an MSI today, we'll use the MSI exec slash I command with the path to the installer to install it. I'm going to add the slash QN flag, which indicates that we want a quiet installation with no interface. Then, it may not be strictly necessary, but I like to include the slash no restart flag in case there's a bundled reboot that might kick a user off in the middle of the day just because we're trying to install some software. Then, because it's a silent installation, I like to log in verbose mode so that I can make sure that our installation actually worked. So let's run it. It's a good size log here. I'm optimistic that it worked. Check our start menu. And 7-zip's installed. So let's now look at relevance for figuring out whether a computer already has 7-zip and if it's at the version that this installer package installs it at. I'm going to open up the Fixlet Debugger, which is an invaluable tool for writing relevance in ActionScript. If you've dabbled in the world of relevance, you may have seen the Reg Apps Inspector. Programs that are good platform citizens register themselves with the OS, and Reg Apps Inspector can return information about them. Let's take a look at the list of the installed Reg Apps by running names of Reg Apps. It looks like 7-zip shows up in the list, which is great, but trust me when I say that not every program will. It's worth putting in the effort to write a slightly more complicated, but much more extensible piece of relevance. So what's the alternative? Every piece of software installed on Windows shows up in the add remove programs list. So we just need to query that information. It turns out that information is stored in this area in the registry under HKLM, software, Microsoft, Windows, current version, and uninstall. There's a subkey for every installed program, but they're not that easy to read through. They've got these weird GUIDs, there's all this information here. But BigFix is really great 
at returning usable information from the registry. So let's go back to the fixlet debugger and look at how we might get that information. So right here, I just have a simple query asking whether or not that key actually exists. So we're checking in the 32-bit and the 64-bit registry, and we're just asking it, does this key exist? So we know that key exists, so let's look at the keys of that key. So this is going to return us a list of all of the subkeys. So we could check, we'd see that this matches. We were only looking in the 64-bit area, so that's why we get more results here when we looked over there in the GUI. But we have our list of keys. Now, I noticed while I was in there that all of the software has a value for display name. That's what's going to help us track down 7-zip. So let's go values display name of keys. So this returns a much more manageable list. You notice that some other stuff dropped off. That's built-in stuff that doesn't have display names as part of it. But we got 7-zip here. And we know that that's the value of the display name. So I'm going to write a new clause asking for the display version, because the two pieces that we care about here are, is the software installed and what version is it installed at? So you may have seen that we can get that with display version. And now we know which key we're looking for. So I'm going to use what's called a whose statement to narrow down the keys that we're looking at to just those where the value display name of it as string starts with 7-zip and run. And so that gives version 19.00.00.0. Now we have both pieces of information that we need to write our final relevance clause which is going to report back true if 7-zip's not installed or it's installed at a lower version than what our package offers, and false if it's already installed at the version we're offering or higher. We can reuse most of this relevance clause from before. Remember that we were using this whose statement to limit the keys that we were looking at to only the ones that start with 7-zip. So now we have an additional piece of information that we want to limit our check to, and that is display version. So the value display version of it as string is greater than or equal to that 19 number we got before. So running this is going to give us the location of that registry key, which we don't really care about. All we care is that it exists. But remember what I said before, we already have 7-zip, but this computer is reporting back true. That's because we need to add a not exists so that the relevance is actually checking. Is it true that there is not a key that matches these criteria? And if there's not a key matching that criteria, it means that we need the software. That's our video on prepping a software package to be turned into a fixlet. This slide has links to additional support resources. If you're having trouble writing relevance for a package you're trying to create, stop by the forum and we'll be able to help you out there. Thanks for watching.